why does anyone need this much power? If you want to go fast, why don't you just get a motorcycle? Someone is gonna get hurt. These crazy kids on their e-bikes are gonna ruin it for everyone else. The things that I said in the beginning of the video are all over the internet. A lot of people are up in arms about these super high-powered e-bikes and you'll see some interesting comments all over Facebook groups and internet forums about when someone builds a super high-powered e-bike. Everyone gets up in arms saying, why do you even need that? You don't even need that. Or similar comments to this when you ask people about what they think about high-powered e-bikes. 40 miles per hour is too fast for public paths. If you get it, stick to the streets. I deliver for DoorDash, so I am in traffic all the time on my e-bike. I need that speed on occasion to get where I need to go. And out of less desirable neighborhoods after drop-off, speed can be your friend and also your enemy. So choose well, young Jedi. Move to Russia, this is America! Should be banned. Those bikes will eventually introduce more restrictions and regulations, which will harm general e-bike riders. So you want a restriction added so that they do not add restrictions? Yes. If you want a fast bike, build a fast bike. Laws never kept me from doing what I wanted to do. It can also go 12 miles an hour alongside your wife's electric XP trike. Just like I do. It's up to the rider. And listen, I see where they're coming from. I also get that there probably are a few small groups of people who are ruining it for everyone else. And this is the reason why we have certain laws in place and certain rules now and signs on perfectly good trails that say no e-bikes allowed that weren't there in the past. And today we're gonna to talk about all of these things and open up a discussion. If you have any comments to this video, I wanna hear them. I respond to almost all of my comments. Let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think of the topic of this video. Should e-bikes chill out? Let me know. Let's get into the video. So e-bikes come in all different shapes and sizes. Some are just normal bikes that have these teeny tiny little motors, maybe 250 watts, 350 watts, that barely help you up hills, mostly good for a flat ground. And some e-bikes, e-bikes, have these giant multiple kilowatt motors that also come with pedals, the bikes come with pedals, that are about as useful as these underpants for your hands. Kinky. Some of these e-bikes have gone so far that they've completely removed the pedals and the chain altogether, and they just have foot pegs. Because why bother? These pedals, honestly, they just get in the way when you're taking a tight turn at 40 or 50 miles an hour. And yes, yeah, some people might call these e-bikes. In my opinion, they're more like in the electric motorcycle territory. And I'm sorry if it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, swims like a duck. It's probably a duck. It's just an electric powered duck. So those kind of bikes, we're not really talking about those today. Um, because those, in my opinion, they're more on the e-motorcycle end of the spectrum. And let me be clear, I love all electric bicycles, electric motorcycles, stuff that has pedals, doesn't have pedals. I like them all. Why? Because I love America. And I think everything should be done in moderation, including moderation. And I already know that some people who are watching this video are already downvoting this video after I said that statement. Why? Because they hate America and they think everyone should stick to some legal limit of a 750 watt motor when in reality a lot of those 750 watt motors peak well over that amount anyways. And sometimes in a mid-drive configuration, those 750 watt motors can be pretty quick. So I got into e-bikes about a year ago and it was completely by accident. It was all about getting more enjoyment from bike riding in general. I love everything about riding a normal bicycle, except when you encounter a hill that you didn't plan for. It took a lot of the fun away. And yeah, I like exercise, but I like exercising when I wanna exercise not when the hill happens to be there. 
And if you're just going for a quick cruise around town or a quick bike ride on the trails, maybe you're not interested in getting a ton of exercise going up a hill and then getting a heart attack at the end, or at least it feels like it. So after testing out a few of the weaker 250 watt e-bikes out there, I thought that's all I needed. I thought I was good with that amount. I ended up buying a Hyper E mountain bike with a beast, a monster of a 250 watt hub motor in the back. And this motor decided to crap out on you every time you were going up long hills. It would just turn itself off. I don't know if it was some overheating issue or, or, or whatnot. It, maybe the controller was just trying to protect itself or the motor, but it would shut off on you halfway or three quarters up a long hill. And with the resistance of the motor, plus the weight of the bike, you couldn't really pedal it comfortably without any power. Originally, I wanted to keep the bike off when I encountered a flat part, but because of all the added resistance, it wasn't practical. It felt like I was dragging an anchor behind me. So I thought to myself, hey, if I'm gonna have to keep the power on at all times, why don't I just go with a high-powered e-bike? So I went with the Aerial Rider Kepler, which was an amazing bike. It was a great bike. I could hit 35 miles an hour on it, or I could just cruise around going 15 miles an hour on a rail trail, and it looked more or less like a normal bicycle. Then something started to happen. I saw all these other YouTubers with their fast e-bikes pushing multiple kilowatts, and I was getting this weird feeling of wanting more. I was now researching building a fast mid-drive bike when an amazing deal came up on my Facebook marketplace for a 2200 watt Wicked Cruiser, now known as the Wired Cruiser. And this bike easily peaks well over 2000 watts and can get pretty close to going 40 miles an hour on its own power. This thing has some torque and the power is so addictive. I felt pretty much invincible when I was going up any hill. Then, I discovered you could do this little itty bitty modification to the controller called a shunt mod, which could give you even more power. I knew it would probably burn up the controller, but I just had to try it, and I did. So now this bike could pull almost four kilowatts of power and easily go 40 miles per hour under its own power. While it lasted, it was amazing, but I did learn a lot and we got some great YouTube content out of it. And yes, guys, I know, I have a problem, I admit it. I'm a speed and power addict. I can't help it, I will own it. To this day, I still scour my Facebook marketplace for deals on fast e-bikes. I don't know why. I just love speed and power, can't help it. When you go fast, you need a big, powerful battery, a big, powerful motor, and a big controller, and of course, you should pair all of these things with a big, beefy frame, big brakes, all of which make your bicycle look more and more like a motorcycle. I'm desperately trying not to get one of those Stealth Bomber clones or Surons out there that goes 50 plus miles an hour, mostly because they look like a dirt bike and they would just give the wrong impression to police that are out there, especially a few years down the road when, and we all know this is coming, when uh, the laws are going to get a little bit tighter around what's allowed and what's not allowed. Some e-bikes are super slow, super chill cruisers, and if you live in a flat area like Florida, just cruising around near the beach at 15 miles an hour with your 250 watt hub motor, it's totally fine. And if you like to keep up with traffic on your 15,000 watt Stealth Bomber clone e-bike, that's fine too. The problem here is a problem you see in other areas of life. Let's say there's two people, person A, person B. Person A this? owns a slow but practical Pontiac Aztec and thinks it's the most useful car in the world and wonders why anyone would ever want to buy anything else. Person B wants to have three seats in his rare supercar for his two supermodels to accompany him to his nightly outings. Person A thinks everyone should live life the way they do and value the same things that they value. Person B could care less about what person A thinks because fast, illegal e-bikes are fun as hell. Right now, the police have their hands full chasing actual ATVs and dirt bikers, 
and most of them could care less if you're going a little bit faster than the 28 mile an hour speed limit that most e-bikes restrict you to legally. As these high power e-bikes get more and more popular and cheaper to produce, you can bet that some Karens out there are definitely going to start complaining more and more about these high powered e-bikes. And this is gonna upset Uncle Sam because right now e-bikes don't need to be registered, insured, and you don't need a license to use them. You also don't need to pay property tax on them. And once Uncle Sam realizes he's losing all of that green goodness by all of us going green, you can almost guarantee that e-bikes are gonna start getting taxed and regulated in one form or another. On top of this, you know some kids are gonna get their hands on an e-bike, crash, hurt themselves, be all over the news, and once the politicians start spewing, but what about the children? The fun is over for the golden age of e-bikes. It's like when you're dating a girl and she says, so what are we? What that translates to is, your free trial has expired, Please pay your monthly subscription fee to continue. So for now, in my opinion, enjoy it while you can. Because this is the golden age of low restrictions on fast e-bikes. And one day, it's going to be all over. So, do e-bikes need to chill out? Nah.